Welcome to another recipe edition on great health, abundant happiness, and outrageous love. Karen is going to make her famous hummus, and I'll say this first. Every time you make this hummus, whoever has it says it's the best hummus they've ever had in their life. And I, I have to agree, it's incredible. Well, thank you, thank you. I love hummus, and we are having some friends over for dinner tonight. Seal and Andy, I can't wait to see you. Um, so we'll be having some hummus with some crackers for appetizers, and I'll be making some other recipes later on uh, for our dinner tonight. So right now I'm just going to go through each ingredient that I'm using for the hummus, um, starting with obviously the organic garbanzo beans. And I'm going to be 100% honest, I've never used this particular brand before, but in light of the stores being a little bit looted, uh, this was my only option, which I was pretty excited about. I bought about 10 bags. Um, that's, that's what they had left. Yeah. Uh, dried beans are kind of good if you're going to go into hiding, like, exactly. you know, we are here. You know, dried beans are great. They also have cans and boxes. I really, really recommend starting with the dry beans and you'll soak them overnight in water in a big pot make sure the pot is filled up very high because the beans will expand should we look at the pot and yes yeah, so so let's I'm go my, take my, a my look. Skin on this real quick yeah and then we'll talk about the rest of the uh ingredients so um and i use the le Creuset pots uh they are the best as far as being safe they're non-toxic they don't leach anything into your food so ooh, this looks great i'll go over the other ingredients but well, yeah what's in the pot because it smells great oh my not goodness. just the beans so i've got the dried beans which i soaked overnight and in water and then i rinsed them then i put them back into the same pot and i added seven cloves of garlic you can see right here um, you don't have to use that much garlic but i love garlic and for me you can never have enough and i cooked the garlic right in there with the beans and these beans i'm going to go back how long does that cook um you're really only supposed to cook them um, according to the directions i believe it's two minutes then you turn it off and let them sit for an hour. Okay. I usually cook my beans a little longer. I don't know if it's because we live in the mountains um, that the altitude affects it. But you know, on the dried beans, you can pretty much go with the directions that are on the package. Okay. And then they do have to sit for an hour. All right. um, Let's go back to the. So what I have in there after I took my organic rinsed beans, I put them back in there. I cook them in this ramen broth by Ocean's Halo. And I absolutely love this product. The only place I've been able to find it so far is Whole Foods. Um, it is not a refrigerated product, so you might be able to order it on Amazon now that Amazon has purchased Whole Foods. If you can't find this product, or if you don't do soy, this is a soy product. and. Um, I'm not really supposed to have soy myself because I've got lime, but my lime is in check and I do feather in soy now and again um, when it's a good source and this is an organic source and I would only use an organic soy product. So if you don't have this available, mushroom broth is my second go-to for cooking my beans in and it just adds like a really great flavor because you could do uh you could just use water if because absolutely. all the spices you have right absolutely you could you could definitely do just water but for me when i'm blending it this extra broth flavor it makes all of the difference okay and then i will add in um do it to taste i like a lot of lemon so i'll add in about a half a cup um, a quarter to a half a cup of lemon juice uh, into that. And I don't usually add this in while it's cooking. I wait until after the beans are cooked in the broth with the spices. So what's in that pot, again, they're cooked in the broth. And then I added all of my spices right then and there. And I added a dash of turmeric, 
I use all organic spices and I highly recommend that you only use organic spices because the spice industry is not that regulated. Um, I put in uh, some cayenne red pepper. Now, because we're having company, I went a little light on it. If it was just Jeffrey and I, I would be using probably two tablespoons, which is crazy, well, but I, I just put in a dash. A lot of times you put a little cayenne on top of the uh, serving bowl. I absolutely will still do that in yeah. this particular case. Thank you, Jeffrey. Well, it looks beautiful. Um, and and then space. cumin. Cumin is wonderful in hummus. And again, you know, I a dash of that. And when I say a dash, I would say like, you know, three to five good sized sprinkles into the pot. Black pepper, I love black pepper and it's great with hummus. So I will actually use a, 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 like a heaping teaspoon of um, organic black pepper and then just a dash of paprika. You can leave this out. Sometimes I save it just for the top because it's pretty. And then, you know, most vegans are familiar with this product, the Bragg's Nutritional Yeast. It adds a really creamy, um, almost a cheesy-like flavor. So I'll put in about a teaspoon of that as well. And um, here's the garlic I'm using. You can certainly buy it and peel it. I tend to get um, a little lazy with garlic because we go through so much of it that it's so much easier for me to buy the organic bags. And these are not in the pot yet. So these will be added once I blend it. So we'll talk about that at the end. Are those just the only two that you're adding after the fact? These are the only two ingredients that we'll add after the fact, aside from maybe sprinkling, you know, some right. of the, um, and th this is certainly an optional ingredient. Um, I love these Rio Luna um, chopped green chilies. So what I'll do with this is I will take half of this can and blend it with the hummus, and then I'll save the other half to put on top of the hummus, so that when you dip in, you get a little green chili in each, um, you know, in each taste. And again, these are a little bit on the spicier side, so um, they're not super spicy, they're mild green right. chilies, and sometimes we'll even use jalapenos when we wanna go all out, but depending on your taste, you don't even have to add these in at all. It's totally optional. I love the flavor of it and it makes it look really pretty. And of course, uh, tahini, there's a lot of brands out there. I've tried a lot of them. I really do like this one. Um, this came from Whole Foods and it's called Once Again and, and it is um, an organic non-GMO product. And with the tahini, I do the tahini to taste. I know a lot of people don't love uh, when I say that because people want exact measurements. So I would recommend that based on, you know, the amount that we would make with all of this, that maybe a quarter to a half a cup of tahini, but put in a quarter of cup and taste it. It gives it a little, and by the way, tahini is ground sesame seed. It gives it a little bit of a peanut butter-ish flavor, which I love. So sometimes I'll go a little heavier on the tahini, but depending on your taste. Start with a quarter of a cup when you blend it all together and then um, add more if you think you want more. Oh, and when you blend it, you don't have to blend all seven of those garlics if you don't want to. Um, you can take some out, save them for later for something else that you're cooking, depending on, again, your garlic taste. I will use all seven. Seal and Andy, guess what? We're having a very garlicky green chili hummus as our appetizer tonight. Can't wait to see you. Wishing you great health, abundant happiness, and outrageous love. And we will be back with the final product at the end.